One of the number one things I get asked by my guitar students is, what plectrum should I use? The truth is there isn't a right or a wrong answer to that question. You can use whatever pick you want. But I do think too many people use the same old plectrum just out of habit without necessarily thinking about what difference it might make with their tone if they used another one instead. So I thought it'd be fun today. I've got some new strings on the acoustic guitar. I've got this lovely Neumann condenser mic set up, which I'm hoping will capture the differences between these picks. And I've got some of my favorite plectrums, some of my least favorite plectrums, and we'll see if it really does make a difference. Gonna stick with the acoustic for this. I think the difference will be more obvious on the acoustic than it would be on the electric, but maybe I'll do another video with the electric guitar as well and see if it's worth switching picks on that. First up, I want to take you through some of the plectrums I'm going to use for this experiment. So, starting with this blue chip TP51R. This is the pick that I use almost all the time when I'm on the acoustic guitar. Uh, it's 1.25 millimeters thick. It's got two pointy ends and then a rounded one for a different tone. It's extremely hard wearing, especially beveled, and it's very expensive. Often this shocks people, these things cost $35 a piece, plus postage. So when I bought mine probably 11 years ago, I think it was, it cost $40, equivalent of 25 quid, um, which is a lot more than your average plectrum. But it's made from an extremely expensive material called Vespal, which is normally used in specialist engineering applications to make little ball bearings and things like that. And it really is, for me, the best plectrum I've ever used on the acoustic guitar. It gets the nicest, warmest tone, it glides off the strings, but yet grips very nicely in your fingers. Next up we have the Red Bear Big Jazzer Heavy. Uh, this one's thicker than the blue chip, smaller, more like a Jazz 3 kind of shape, and cheaper. Comes in at a bargain $28 instead of the 35 for the blue chip, so much more affordable and uh, I use this mostly on the electric guitar but it'd be interesting to see how it sounds on the acoustic. This is a new one for me, this is the Jim Dunlop Prime Tone which I think is their attempt to make a blue chip style pick but for a lot less money. I got a three pack of these for $7.99 um, similar kind of shape, it's got the beveled edge 1.5 millimeters thick and as I say I've only just got these so I'm interested to see what the sound is like. Something slightly different, this is a Vagan. Uh, not quite sure if that's how you pronounce it. Let me know if I'm getting it wrong. Uh, this is like a gypsy jazz pick, so kind of you get in the sound of like Django Reinhardt. Um, extremely thick, 3.5 millimeters, and got these nice big grips. Um, and this one costs 16.50 in dollars. So a bit cheaper than the Red Bear and the Blue Chip, but still pricey, but very specialist kind of thing. I just use this occasionally if I want that kind of Django Reinhardt, Gypsy Jazz kind of tone off the acoustic guitar. So it'd be fun to see what the difference is when it's actually compared on the mic. Okay, last and possibly least, uh, we have an array of different Jim Dunlop picks, the sort you can get in any guitar store. Um, some thin ones, some thick ones. So I'm gonna try these out, just make sure I'm not being a total snob by preferring the sound of the more expensive ones when actually maybe there isn't a difference, we will see. Okay, I'm gonna start off and just play a G major scale with all of these picks so that we can compare them directly. So first off, blue chip. Red bear. Jim Dunlop Thin Jim Dunlop Medium Cortex Ok, 
Okay, next up we're going to play a short chord progression with each pick. We'll see what the difference is. Uh, starting off with the blue chip. And then the red bear. Prime tone. The Vegan. That was loud. Jim Dunlop Finn. And the Tortex Medium. Okay, next I just want to improvise a little bit with each plectrum uh, and I'll sort of describe as I'm doing it how it feels because I think it's not just about tone here as well it's about how it actually feels in your fingers and whether it makes you play differently perhaps so again we'll start off with the blue chip <laughs> to plectrum for acoustic guitar gets a lovely loud tone but without being too harsh it's, it's bright it's well-rounded before it's amazingly grippy considering there's nothing there there's no sort of holes in it or anything like some of the other ones but somehow it grips really well despite the fact that it glides across the strings so you can tell I'm a big fan I like the tone it makes both for melodic stuff <laughs> The red bear, now as I say, I use this for electric guitar a lot. Gets good pinch harmonics and things like that. Sort of get that on the acoustic. <laughs> but anyway, normal playing. plectrum again it feels grippy I think that's more to do with the the grip holes than the actual material with this one similar sort of balanced tone from the that you get from the blue chip maybe a little bit more ta more metallic somehow So it's nice, but I, I prefer using that on the electric, and I prefer using the blue chip on the acoustic. Um, and then, so the prime tone. This was a friend of mine told me about these picks as a kind of a similar thing to a blue chip, but nowhere near the same cost. So I've been quite intrigued. <laughs> Thank you. 
pick. I don't feel it's quite as grippy, I don't feel quite as secure with it as I do with the blue chip. But it's a nice tone, it's, it's similar kind of tone I would say to the blue chip. Certainly a good alternative if you don't want to splash out $35 plus on a blue chip then three for $7.99 is pretty good value. Okay, and then this beast of a pick. Um, change the way you play and that certainly gets me into gypsy jazz mode Django Reinhardt Pirelli Le Grand and my goodness it's loud dead using one of these <laughs> but for the, in the interest of the experiment thin by name thin by nature I would say definitely not my cup of tea but as I said before there isn't a right or a wrong so if you like this kind of pick and you're using it because you like that particular tone then I don't see any problem with that it's certainly not for me though Maybe one advantage is it's quite a rhythmic kind of thwack that you get on when you're playing chords. Yeah, and then this medium Tortex 0.73 mil. to the thin one but again not really my cup of tea I feel that you can feel you can hear more of the plectrum hitting the strings you get less of just the pure tone of the strings themselves and a little bit thinner interesting listening to the different tones that we're getting from these picks and it's also quite interesting looking at the screen here at the waveforms that have recorded seeing the different volume of each pick and seeing the different attack and different sustain that we get from each one so it certainly shows there's a big difference as someone who plays electric and acoustic guitar I sometimes find when I've been playing a lot of electric guitar and then I switch over to the acoustic I find myself looking for the pickup selection switch or looking for the tone control and it's occurred to me by doing this actually these things are kind of our tone controls and our pickup selectors in the sense that they will change they will sculpt that tone that's one thing I like about electric guitar you can sculpt the actual tone to fit into the the mix or the band that you're playing in and actually that's how we can do that with the acoustic guitar switch plectrums you know I was a bit uh, disparaging about the thin Dunlop pick but Maybe I could imagine certain situations where that kind of thin tone that's not going to get in the way of other instruments would be exactly what's needed. You might still think I'm a bit mad for spending this amount of money on plectrums, but all I would say is that let's not forget the plectrums where it all starts. 
It's the thing that strikes the string, causes it to vibrate, sends the sound waves out there, which then become the music that we love to hear. So it's clearly a very important piece of kit and hopefully I've at least made the case that we should think about what pick we're using and in what musical context and what kind of sound we want to make. I mean, I, I know a lot of violinists who would spend thousands and thousands of pounds on a violin bow, which I guess is kind of the equivalent for the violin. And why? It's just a stick of wood with some hair, you know, but of course these things do make a huge difference. I've only really scratched the surface of the world of plectrums here, so if you've got a favourite that you think I should check out, then leave a comment below. I'd love to discover some new ones. And also let me know which one you thought sounded best today out of mine. I mean, I, I'm probably going to stay with the blue chip, I think that was my favourite sound. But I'd happily do a gig or a recording session with the prime tone. I'm really impressed with those. Uh, the Red Bear I like, maybe a little bit too metallic. Um, the Vegan's fantastic, good fun, but a very specific kind of sound. So maybe I probably wouldn't do a full gig or a recording session. I'd use that for special occasions or particular jobs. The thin ones, I think you could tell they weren't my favourite, but like I said, I could probably imagine the situation in a particular recording session, a particular mix, where you want a slightly thinner sound that isn't going to get in the way of the other instruments. So, you know, I'm not going to throw them out, I'm going to keep them, and who knows, I may use them in the future. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you don't already. Mm -hmm.